my last video, you'll have seen that I built some custom remote focus control setups using this, the Skywatcher Autofocus Kit with the Hitech Astro DC Focus Controller. Now this solution is based on a DC motor and after I made that video I thought maybe it's time I treated myself and upgraded to a stepper motor solution. So what I did was to buy myself the uh, ZWO EAF 5 volt uh, focus motor and this is essentially the controller and the motor all in one. It's a stepper motor solution. It doesn't even require a power supply connection. It's just a USB connection uh, and everything is uh, internal to, to the unit so you can just control it directly from the computer. So in this video I'm going to show you what's in the box. I actually also bought the little temperature probe for this and I also bought the little uh, handset hand controller as well. So I'm going to show you what's in the packaging and then I'm going to show you how I set this up on my Newtonian telescope which is a Skywatcher Quattro 8CF which has the dual speed Crayford focuser on it. So let's get started. So let's start by taking a look at what's in the main box. We get a quick user guide, some Allen keys, two different sizes, a little bag of uh, bolts and washers, a mounting bracket, USB cable, it's a flat style cable, the focus motor itself which we'll come back to in just a moment and then four uh, of these uh, couplers, flexible couplers, uh, each designed for a different uh, size of shaft. So let's just take a look a bit more closely at the focus motor itself. Here it is, well, let's just zoom in. So it's in a nice metallic body uh, with this red anodized finish. On the back we've got a USB port and then we've got this other port which is actually a jack, like a, like a microphone jack port and that is either for the temperature sensor or for the hand controller to, pl to plug into depending on which one you're using. On the front we've got the actual drive shaft with a flat on it so it's just D-shaped and then these two threaded holes in the body uh, for the mechanical attachment. So that's the motor itself. So now you've seen what's in the box, let's have a look at how to fit this to the Newtonian telescope with the dual speed Crafer focuser. So this is how the focus adjuster works on the telescope. The body is mounted with these four bolts and then there's a tension adjuster which controls the friction. We start by loosening the grub screw so we can remove the knob from the bottom end of the focuser. Then take out the friction adjustment, adjustment to thumb screw. Now we can loosen off and remove the four screws that hold the body of the focuser onto the focus tube. Now we can discard these four screws because they're not going to be long enough when we introduce the bracket for the EAF. We're going to need longer screws. Just going to loosen these two grub screws which push down on the friction plate and make sure they're nice and loose. So here's the bracket and you can see by lining them up which of the slots are going to be used to align with the four mounting holes on the bracket. So I'm using four longer bolts and I'll display at the bottom here what they are. I'm just fitting those loosely in the holes. Now the friction knob is going to have to go back in but it needs to be longer because it's got to go through the bracket now. So I've bought this longer friction knob and again I'll display at the bottom what the knob is. You can see the old knob has a shorter thread and this one has a longer thread. Now it needs to go through the slot in the middle of the plate but doesn't actually fit through there so you'll see that I've actually drilled out a wider hole in that slot to enable the friction adjustment knob to go through like that so these are the mounting bolts that I'm using 
and I'm using a flat washer and a split washer under the head so that these stay nice and tight. So I've got four of those fitted loosely now. Now we bring in the motor. You can see that I've already fitted the coupler onto the motor, making sure that it's not actually touching the body of the motor. And now I can engage the other end of the coupler. Now I've got two of these smaller screws with split washers under the head and I'm going to use these to loosely attach the motor to the bracket. Now I can offer up the whole assembly to the telescope. Make sure that the friction thumb screw is taken right out at this point. We don't want it getting involved. And just by hand, I'm going to fit the four mounting screws loosely into their threaded holes on the focus tube. Now I'm just making absolutely sure that the motor is loose because as we tighten down the bracket on top of the focus of body it changes the spacings so we don't want that motor attached tightly at all to the bracket. Now I'm tightening down the four mounting screws making sure that the body of the focuser is nice and square to the focus tube. that's nice and firmly attached now. Now I can tighten the grub screw so that the coupler is firmly attached to the shaft of the focuser. And finally we can tighten the two screws so that we've got now a firm attachment of the focus motor body to the bracket with the flexible coupler taking up any misalignment that may still be present. Now we can refit the friction adjustment knob. Plug in the USB cable. And we can also, if we want to, plug in the temperature probe as well. Now here we're in Sequence Generator Pro and I'm going to select the ZWO focuser and then click on the settings spanner button to bring up the little GUI. So there's a number of settings to be aware of on this GUI. We have the name at the top which is editable but I generally leave that alone. We have the current position and we have a set uh, zero button, we have a move button, we have an in and an out button with an amount to move in and out. Uh, we also have a reverse, so to reverse the sense of in and out, so if yours is moving out when it says in you can reverse that. You've got a maximum position and also a backlash setting and an option to make it beep when you ask it to move. These bottom options you only see when you have the advanced box ticked. So now you're going, I'm going to show basic mo movement. If you, if you find that the focuser turns but the tube doesn't move then you need to tighten your friction control knob. So here I'm moving in a thousand at a time. And I'm working it gradually inwards until the focus tube is fully in. Another way of doing this is to loosen the friction knob right off and push the tube all the way in and then zero. Uh, use the set zero button. Once you're fully in, we'll set this to zero. So this is now the zero position. So we can now start moving outwards. And we can move outwards 
in steps of a few thousand and what we're now going to do is find out where the outermost position is and what that value is in terms of the ZWO EAF position. I'm watching the tube as it moves out to see when it hits its end stop. Not too much further to go now. You'll see I actually draw lines with the felt tip where the rough focus point is for different setups. So you'll see multiple felt tip lines on my focus tube. So I'm just making the step smaller now because I believe we're getting close to the limit. Okay, so we've hit the limit, so I'm just going to set the, the step size to be a lot smaller, just 200. And then we'll step outwards, and seeing that it's moving, and it's still moving. But now when we click it, we're looking for when we click it, it doesn't move. And then come in a little bit, and we say that's the maximum. So we can take that current position and put it in as our maximum position. That's great. So now we know where zero is, and we know what the maximum position is. Now we can work out roughly where the correct focus position is, depending on your setup, and that's a useful number to put into the move, the box just to the left of the move button to help you find rough focus the first time you're there. And it's about there. Okay, so the next thing is to set up the backlash. So start with the backlash set to zero. Now I'm going to move out. And in until the little grub screw hole in the times 10 part of the Crayford focus. So the one that turns faster is pointing horizontally. So just setting the step size nice and small and just adjusting it. You see that grub screw hole coming round now. I'm just going to try and get that horizontal. So I'm going to make the step size even smaller. There we go. It's horizontal. So I've now moved a large amount one way and then moved back again. And you'll see that when it moves back by the same amount it does not come back to the same position. And the difference is the backlash. So now we can move 10, 20, 30 more, and now it's back at the correct position. And that tells us that the backlash is about 30. So I can enter the backlash as 30. I can test it now, move a large distance away, out or in, and then back out again. And it comes now comes back to the correct position when we come back. So our backlash is correctly compensated. Now we can fit the camera, filter wheel and spacers, which is the full load that the focus is going to have to take. Tighten them off and just do some testing to make sure that the focus tube moves properly and we've got the right tension on the friction thumb screw. Well I hope you found that useful. If you have any questions or you want to give me some feedback, do drop me a comment and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you're already a subscriber, then uh, thank you very much. If you're not already one and you'd like to see more of my videos, click on subscribe and tick that bell icon so that you get to see notifications when I release new videos. Until next time, clear skies.